Hey guys, welcome back to another tutorial. In this video, we're going to be converting this lantern from kerosene to electric and giving it an updated paint job using spray paint and toothpaste. To get started, I'm going to remove the glass from the lantern and set it aside to be painted later. I also want to remove the fuel cap since it's already nicely rusted from years of being in our haunt. With those pieces out of the way, I drilled a hole in the back side of the lantern large enough to pass a lamp cord through, removed the wick holder, and used some tin snips to cut away the metal inside to make room for a lamp socket. I'm going to start with a metallic spray paint to coat the entire piece. This will be our base layer. You can choose overall coverage, or just spray the areas where you want the paint to look chipped. While we wait for the metallic paint to dry, let's talk about the parts to convert this to a lamp. I'm using a standard E26 light bulb base and a two-prong outdoor rated extension cord. On the extension cord, you'll notice that one side has ridges and one side is smooth. I'm going to strip off half an inch from the ends of the cord, and once we're finished painting, we'll connect the smooth side, which is the hot side, to the silver terminal, and the ridged side, which is the neutral side, to the gold terminal. Now that the metallic paint is dry, we're going to take some gel toothpaste and a skewer. You could also use a small paintbrush, and we're going to apply toothpaste in the areas where we want the paint to look chipped away. This technique, much like our salt technique, masks the base layer of paint from the top layer, and once the top layer of paint is dry, it can be removed to expose the metallic below. I gave the lantern a coat of green spray paint and allowed it to dry off camera, and now we can start to remove the toothpaste. I'm wiping it down with a wet paper towel, but you could also do this step with an old paintbrush. You may find that the base metallic paint chips away during this step, as it has for me. But don't worry, it adds an extra layer of chipping to your paint job that makes it look even older. Once you have all the toothpaste removed, you'll want to rinse the lantern to remove any residue before allowing it to fully dry and spraying a matte clear coat to seal in your paint. We'll set that aside for now and get started on aging the lantern glass. To age the glass, I've thinned out some raw sienna, moss green, and wood glue with water, and I'm going to brush it onto the outside surface of the glass. This doesn't have to be a solid coat since we're going to use a bit of rubbing alcohol to break up the paint and a sponge to help create some texture and remove any brush strokes. You can see how the paint reacts to the alcohol and starts to spread out. This creates a really unique look and helps to give variation to the opacity of the paint. Once you're happy with the coverage, set it aside to dry. Now we can start wiring up the lantern. After pulling the cord through the hole in the side of the lantern and connecting it to the socket, you'll want to add some electrical tape to cover the terminals for safety and place it into the body of the lantern. Then take the light bulb, I'm using one of those LED torch bulbs, and install it over the cage before putting the glass back in place. You may need to slightly unseat the socket, but it can be pushed back down into the lantern once the glass is installed. For a final pass, I'm going to use a mix of brown and black acrylic paint applied with a sponge to help grunge it up a bit more and make the paint look less new, making sure to get good coverage in all the joints and seams. Thank you. 
I'm also using this color to darken the top portion of the glass to resemble blackening that happens from use. And a last bit of rubbing alcohol to help break up the paint a bit more. The last thing to do is check that your bulb is working, and you're done. This is one of those techniques that can easily be overdone. If I had to do it again, I'd have gone a bit lighter on the toothpaste chipping. You could always reapply some of your top layer of paint if it's too chipped, or if it doesn't feel like there's enough, use a bit of sandpaper to add a bit more. Well, that's going to be it for this video. If you'd like to see more videos like these, be sure to subscribe to the channel, like the video, and click the notification bell to be alerted every time we upload a new video. And until next time, happy haunting. Thank you.